Welcome to Metrocasting. I'm Doug Farley. We begin this episode with a follow-up to a story we first brought you in Season 1 of Metrocasting, and it concerns sisters and former Columbia Montour Votech basketball teammates Charlene and Justine Hook of Berwick. Both have now reached an important milestone in their basketball careers. Earning a thousand career points in high school basketball is a relatively common occurrence among high schools across the nation. But what is somewhat rare is to have siblings, brothers and sisters, each have thousand point careers during their high school playing days. Locally, until last year, nobody at the Columbia Montour Votex School near Bloomsburg had ever had a thousand point career in basketball. That is, until Justine Hook of Berwick dropped in bucket number 1,000 in January last year. She became the first 1,000-point scorer in that school's history, just beating out boys basketball star Jesse Pegg of Danville, who became the school's second 1,000-point career scorer at the end of last year's season. And that brings us to this year. As you may remember from last season's Metro Casting story on Justine, one of her biggest supporters was her sister, Charlene Hook, who was on the court with Justine when she scored that historic basket. This year, though, it was Charlene's turn to step into the spotlight and become only the second girl in Columbia Montour Votech girls basketball history to score 1,000 career points. Now, as we said, we're not sure how sisters each scoring 1,000 career points holds up in high school basketball record books, but you can rest assured that having sisters become the first two people in a school's history to reach that milestone is a pretty rare thing. And we got the chance to sit down with Charlene, as well as her sister and her father, to talk about this amazing accomplishment and to see how it all came about. Um, it's just a big relief. Like, I, no one ever really thought I could get it. I mean, last year I was saying, well, good for Justine. She got it. I just don't think I'll ever get it. And it just hasn't sunk in. I haven't really thought about it. I mean, it happened. I am so happy for my sister. She got what she wanted. She deserves it. Um, we worked so hard to get where we were. And just to know that we're really competitive with each other and we push each other, I'm just happy. Like, oh my gosh. Very proud. Their mother and I are very proud of them. Could not be more proud. Uh, they dreamed about this ever since they were little girls. Uh, in the very first high school game. Their mother and I took them to. Uh, I believe it was an Annie Coke game. They fell in love with the sport and they've been playing it ever since. Despite all the pressure to reach that thousand point mark, Charlene says she wasn't really all that nervous. I wasn't much more so as nervous, but just like, I just want to get it over with. Like, I was in a big rush the first half and I just want to get it done. And thankfully I only needed one point going into halftime, but. I guess I was a little bit nervous, but more so I just wanted to get it over with. I was like, oh my gosh, like she's gonna score a thousand points. I, was, I cried. Once I hugged her, I'm like, oh my gosh, I was like, you did, I'm so proud of you. And according to their father, getting to this point, both daughters reaching that thousand point plateau meant lots and lots of practice. Oh yeah, uh, fundamentals. Uh, they wanted to learn to play the game. I said, well, you're gonna learn to play it right. And uh, read some books, a lot of study, and learned the game right with them. And uh, we went down to court, and uh, they were very good students. I mean, did everything perfect. They kept doing it over and over and over till they could do it. And uh, we actually played games, made a family game of horse and around the world, and foul shots. We could make the most foul shots in a row. It just become fun to everybody. Still, Charlene says there was a rivalry between Justine and herself that, in the end, turned out to be rather beneficial to both of them. Um, it's very competitive, to say the least. I want to beat her at everything, and she wants to beat me at everything. But at the end of the day, we're just trying to help each other out. We played one-on-one -on -one a lot, and she would usually beat me, but then when I would beat her, I wouldn't let her forget it, I guess. And um, I guess I just learned how to do better moves because she's a really good defensive player. So I, she helped me with my offense a lot. She had a hard time shooting with pressure in her face and I, I knew all of her moves just because I can tell by her eyes. So it kind of got her a little bit more diverse with what she was doing because I knew when she was doing a shot fake or a fadeaway because I could just tell. As we grew up together, um, we'd go down to the court a hundred times 
and just play one-on-one, -on -one. and she'd beat me, and then I'd beat her. And I knew, like, at least one thing I wanted to accomplish good is that my defense, my offense, obviously, as a point guard, that would come. But I wanted to be really, really good at defense. And I was good defense with her, but my offense <laughs> wasn't that good. So Charlie would, like, say, oh, steal the ball away from me at one time, and then steal the ball at me again. And I'm just like, okay, well, she knows all my moves because we've been together for so long. So I had to learn some new moves. And of course, with their parents' encouragement, they both learned to excel at the game. They're really kind and generous, and they push us to where we are today. And my dad, <laughs> he should have a lot, a lot of gratitude to where his kids are today. Because without him, we wouldn't be where we are. And then my mom, she, um, she would like say, well, kids, you have to come up and eat. And my dad's like, uh-uh, you have to get down here. You have to stay. And I'm just like, I have to go eat sometime. Well, not until you finish these foul shots. So I want to thank both of them. They're really, really, really good parents to us. Now, Charles says he never played basketball when he was younger and that he did try to get Charlene and Justine to play other sports. I did not play basketball. I was a football player and baseball player. And uh, I learned the game. I was a student of the game just like they were. Since they were five, I had to learn the game of basketball right with them. And, and you know, I, like I said, I tried to get them to play softball. But, and they were good softball players, both of them. But they just wanted basketball, so I figured, well, I better join them or I'll be going to football games by myself. Nothing really ever compared. Like, it was fun, but softball was just too slow. Like, it was boring. I didn't really like it. I mean, I guess I was okay at it, but it wasn't my thing. It's cool. I like it. I enjoy watching games. Instead of watching football on TV, we watch basketball. Charlie's a Maryland fan, Justine's a UConn fan, and I like Tennessee myself. <laughs> but uh, we get some rivalries going there when those teams play. And now that he is such a fan of the sport of basketball, Charles says he can't wait for the day to just be a spectator again. It's been a long time. I mean, uh, I'm glad it's almost over. Their high, I don't want to wish their high school career away, but... Uh, I'm glad that their mother and I can get back to somewhat of a, the way it used to be. But uh, we're going to miss it, and we're very proud of them. Justine's doing well in college. Char's on her way there. And uh, it'll be interesting just being able to sit back and be a father watching from the stands instead of being on the sideline coaching them. I have never had that pleasure just to sit back and be a dad and watch them. And he will soon get that chance as Charlene will graduate this spring. And Justine is already attending and playing basketball at Bay Path College in Massachusetts. Charlene is hoping to continue her education and playing basketball at Keystone College above Scranton. Both say they have a lot of people to thank for getting them where they are today. I want to thank everyone that helped uh, me and my sister get to where we are. Like my dad and my mom, they've been through everything. And um, just the coaches, my first coach, uh, John Stapard. He helped me out a lot. And then um, also my coach now, Jessica Huntley, because <laughs> she, she has been coming to some like season um, practices like last year, and she helped us out a lot. And just for anyone else that deserves credit to where we are today. Uh, I just want to thank like everybody who's ever pushed me to my goals and ever like taught me anything or believed in me. I do have to say that while Charlene and Justine Hook are both incredible athletes, they're also incredible people as well, and that's a tribute to their parents. Kudos to them for bringing up two wonderful kids. Best of luck to you all.